Good evening, church. This year, we, as a church, decided to focus on the family. I'd like to share a very important topic. God has been teaching me, first of all, and I would like to talk about the power of words. God was showing me throughout these couple months really how, how many times I needed to speak a word of blessing and I would be silent. Especially realizing how many words of kindness I would speak to my kids, but then realizing how little of those words went towards my wife. The more I looked into the power of words, and all the more I see how amazing the word of God is that's found in the Bible. There are roughly over a million words in the English language. And majority of them are technical words that scientists use. So we're left with a little bit. Actually, there's still over 500,000 words that we can use, but interesting enough that the average person only uses 5,000 to 40,000 words in their day-to-day -day communication with which they can build someone up or tear them down, encourage or discourage, make someone laugh or make them cry. There's a perfect passage in the Bible that shows us the danger of words and when they're spoken wrongly. Let's open our Bibles to James chapter 4. I'm going to be reading from 7 to 12. Every kind of animal, bird, reptile, fish, is tamed and has been tamed by humankind. But no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it we curse people who are made in God's likeness. Blessings and cursing come out of the same mouth. My brothers and sisters, these should not be this way. Does a spring pour out sweet and bitter water from the same opening? Can a fig tree produce olives? My brothers and sisters, or grapevine produce figs? Neither can salt water spring yield fresh water. In Psalms 52 too, it says, like a sharpened razor, your tongue devises destruction, working treachery. In Proverbs 15, 4, it says, the tongue that heals the tree of life, but a devious tongue breaks the spirit. During my school days, I knew a young man who was somewhat scrawny, but boy, he knew how to use those words. He was able to tear down the biggest kids in school, paralyzing them with words. We don't need to be taught to bring others down with words. We, we know how to do that just fine. We have to remind to do the opposite and instead lift people up, encourage them with words of blessing. There's actually an amazing study of how words of love and words of hate can affect water and they can affect plants. You can even search this yourselves, but it's amazing how just by speaking, we can affect other people. And yet we live in a nation that is divided and we speak harsh words, profane words, we curse each other. And, and the sad thing is in our schools and in our workplaces, we hear these cursing words that are passed back and forth, even jokingly, without even thinking twice. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue can bring death or life. 
Those who love to talk will reap the consequence. Words bridge us together. And we can reinforce that bridge or we can destroy it. Words matter. And especially in marriage. It takes many words to build a strong bridge, but only one to burn it. One unknown author said, your marriage will never be better than what comes out of your mouth. Let's read that again. Your marriage will never be better than what comes out of your mouth. Cliff Nortrus and Howard Markman of the University of Denver did a study. They found that couples who spoke 10 or more negative words out of 100 words, those couples would later split up. That means 10% of the words that they spoke were words that tore each other down. The study found that hostile put-downs act as cancerous cells that if not dwelt with, will spread. The sobering thing is the study showed that the success or the failure of the marriage wasn't on their common interests or how much affection they had towards each other. It wasn't even about how much money they had in the bank. It all pointed to how they spoke to one another. One family psychologist said that he can tell with almost absolute accuracy if a couple was going to stay together just by how they spoke with one another. Wow. Words have so much power. Let's start using them to bless each other, especially those who are closest to us. There are two kinds of words that can strengthen the bridge. Words of thankfulness and words of praise. And don't get praise and flattery mixed up. Those are two separate things. It's a separate sermon of its own. The enemy will do everything in his power to have us instead grumble and be ungrateful. Grumbling leads to doubting one another and being unthankful. These two will disconnect us from the creator, will disconnect us from our spouses, will disconnect us from our kids, and everyone we come in contact with. Churchill was an outspoken man. And one of his critics came up and said, if I was your wife, I would give you a drink of poison. And he replied right away, he said, if I was your husband, I would drink it. How simple it is to reply with a negative remark when somebody says something negative to us. But how hard is it to reply positively? We are so used to saying words out of how we feel instead of listening to God. And he calls us to bless each other, even our enemies. The Bible says what comes out of the mouth is linked directly to our hearts. Matthew 12, 34 to 37, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the goodness treasures of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word man may speak, they will give an account of all on the day of judgment. For by the words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. We need to fill our hearts with God's words. And for he will help us to bring blessing. If our words are so powerful, can you imagine the power of God's word? Hebrews, in Hebrews it says, for the word of God is alive, active, sharper than and double-edged sword. It, has a, it penetrates even to divide the soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. 
Now that's power. The word of God has the power to change the direction of a man who was ready to take his life in the hotel room, but the living words in the Bible which was faithfully placed in the drawer was able to transform his mind and his heart of that individual and to restore the relationship with his wife and his family. They cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distress. He sent word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction, Psalm 107. God's word is the only hope we have. It changes our hearts, therefore changes our words, which changes the relationship that we have with one another. Start now. Let's try to speak words of blessing to each other, regardless if they are deserved or not. It's not easy. Trust me. I know. I want to criticize. I want to point out the wrong. I want to teach how it's done right. Let's step into faith and bless each other with words that heal. Words like, please forgive me. These words will melt the coldest hearts. Then followed by words like, thank you. And words of praise like, great job. I would like to conclude to remind everyone, especially married couples, to bless each other with kind words and words that build and encourage. Now go out there and bless one another. Be thankful for what you have and sing praises to our God. May the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you all. Amen. Let's pray.